three recipes in the previous episode, then three in this one that makes us six. My <laughs> I was really preparing my hands, like three plus three equals six. Uh, it's a bit disturbing. Yes! Hey guys, salut, this is Alex and this is part two of six mind-blowing and outside-of-the-box recipes with just a can of sardines. In the first episode, we made a cheat on a French escabeche, another one on a Japanese unagidon, and finally, a cheat on an Italian dish called pasta con le sarde. So before we move on to the recipes themselves, I want to share with you some of my creation process. So how do I come up with such recipes? It's fairly simple. I always start the same. I analyze the product, in this case the sardines, and their characteristics. First up, the texture. It's fragile and mushy. So you can take advantage of this, like make a paste, for example, or you can counter that and try to firm them up. But in all cases, you will have to take extra care of those. Second characteristic, it's on the fatty side. It's an oily fish already preserved in oil. So you gotta counter that with freshness, for example, herbs or acidity, lime, lemon, vinegar, or finally, a heat like pepper or chili. And the third characteristic is the strong smell slash flavor slash taste, which you can, in fact, um, just soften with a neutral base or you can fight it with an even stronger flavor. I think this is a fair preview on how I create my recipes. I just sit, I take a closer, deeper look at the ingredient, try to understand it, and then the recipe is just a consequence. It becomes obvious. Okay, no more chit chat, bullshit. Let's make the recipes. Eggplants and sardine korma. This is absolutely stunning, really simple to make, yet this might be my favorite recipes in this sardine series. Open a can of sardines, pour the oil from the sardines in a saucepan. Add two tablespoons of korma paste, or you can use any curry paste. Using pre-made korma paste is legitimate in these recipes. Keep it as simple and quick as possible. Slice an onion and add it to the saucepan. Fry those together until nicely combined. Add coconut milk and try to unstick the caramelized bits from the bottom of the saucepan. Cut an eggplant in chunks and add it to the saucepan. Eggplants are like sponges. They will suck out the liquid, hence the flavors. Cook those on medium-low heat for at least 15 minutes. So normally, to counter the evaporation liquid loss, you would add to the saucepan a cup of water, for example. But if you add instead a cup of coconut juice, like a can of roasted coconut juice, even better, you would counter the evaporation liquid loss and not dilute the flavors. It's a double win. Add cashew nuts and then, off the heat, add sardines and really, really gently mix that up. Please do not make a mushy paste. Just coat the fillets nicely. At the end, sprinkle with finely chopped coriander leaves and a bit more cashews. The reason why that dish works so well is that both the sardines and the korma paste have a strong flavor, so they balance themselves nicely without crushing the other one. Sardine spread roll. It's really simple on preparation, but it's bold on delivery. So first off, let's make a sardine spread. Thoroughly mash sardines and cream cheese in equal proportions. Add spring onions finely sliced. Chop up a few pickles, some salad leaves, cucumber, avocado, and carrots. Now grab a few Indian chapatis or Mexican tortillas, lay the bread flat, and smear a layer of sardine spread. Cover it with salad leaves. By the way, do not make the same mistake I did. Do not cover the whole thing with salad leaves. Just leave a small sardine spread edge at the end so that when you roll the thing up, it will stick. I love that sound. <laughs> make an horizontal line of veg, 
then roll that up and cut it like a maki sushi. A good drizzle of spicy mayo, which is just mayo and sriracha hot sauce mixed up. It's good, it's fast, and it's perfect to watch a few episodes on Netflix. So by the way, if you like my stuff on YouTube, then you can do a lot worse than checking my other social medias. You'll get some delicious good pics, also some weird shit, and definitely some behind the scenes. Fried sardines in chimichurri sauce. That recipe is genius, because we are gonna double cook the sardines. It's useless, at best. It's definitely not useless. I mean, when you cook something, you can be looking for doneness or you can be looking for a texture, like a crunch, for example. So first off, let's make a quick chimichurri sauce. That Argentinian salsa is perfect to bring some kick and some freshness to meats and fish. Using a pestle and mortar, bash up garlic, salt, black pepper, chili flakes, paprika, oregano. Add fresh chili pepper and fresh parsley. Finally, add a good drizzle of olive oil and red wine vinegar. You can keep that salsa in the fridge for up to a week. In a frying pan over medium heat, place a circle of parchment paper. That will provide an extra layer of protection so that sardines won't stick to the pan. Safety first, as oil might slightly splash everywhere. Let them fry until golden, then carefully flip them over. Pour that spicy and fresh salsa over fried sardines. And that is outrageous. I mean, texture-wise, you've got some crunch and some softness from the sardines, and their fattiness is balanced by the kick and the freshness from the chimichurri sauce. So that makes us six mind-blowing recipes. I hope you like those recipes. And if you did, then give it a like, a thumbs up, and spread it over like butter on your social media. I really enjoy looking at your beautiful pictures, the recipes you make at home with your family. So please don't forget to tag me in if you're posting them like on Twitter, on Facebook, or Instagram. In the meantime, take care and bye-bye. Salut! is a bad boy or girl. That there is no such thing as a bad boy.